Hello and welcome to the video lecture on concurrency control. Um, so, what is concurrency control trying to tell us about? So, we are uh, in a multi-user environment. We are almost always in a multi-user environment. About the only time you're not in a multi-user environment is, you know, you've created a Microsoft Access database and it's on your computer and that's it. So you're the only person using it. Uh, so in every other uh, example uh, of a database management system, you're in a multi-user environment, so that is, from, for all intents and purposes, uh, the situation that you're in. Uh, so you need to allow multiple people to use this database at the same time, um, and that simultaneous access to the data can result in uh, interference, uh, what's known as interference and data loss. So what you have to do is you have to handle uh, this multi-user environment. Um, how do you allow how do you allow simultaneous operations against the database so that you maintain data integrity um, and that one person doesn't interfere with another? Uh, for instance, a great example. Uh, could you imagine what would happen if I was able to, uh, you know, say I had no integrity whatsoever and I was trying to beat the system. So what I would do, uh, knowing, you know, the scale of the planet, is I would uh, send my wife on vacation to, say, Florida uh, or, you know, Rio de Janeiro, something like that, uh, somewhere remote, uh, remote from me. Um, and the purpose of that would be we want to uh, double our money. So she's going to go to a bank in her location, I'm going to go to a bank in my location, uh, we're going to have each other uh, speaking on cell phones, we're both going to stick our ATM card uh, into um, an ATM at the same exact time and concurrently try to withdraw all of our savings at the same time uh, for all intents and purposes, doubling our money. Uh, we need a mechanism to stop that from happening. Could you imagine uh, if that was allowed to happen? Um, and considering uh, the way the planet is, the fact that I'm talking in real time to my wife in whatever location she's at, uh, you have to realize that that data uh, associated with the ATM is, is probably traveling just as fast, if not faster. Uh, so we're talking about real time. Um, so uh, an example uh, that the author gives is the uh, the lost update example. All right, so we have no concurrency control in effect. Uh, so we've got John and Marsha. Right, um, John. Uh, this is again the ATM example. Uh, so John goes, uh, looks at, uh, reads the account balance and sees a thousand dollars. Marsha goes in, reads the account balance, sees a thousand dollars. John withdraws two hundred dollars. The balance is eight hundred dollars in his session. Then Marsha withdraws three hundred dollars in her session, and her balance is seven hundred dollars. So, on John's session, it writes that the account balance is eight hundred dollars, and then after that. Marsha's transaction writes the account balance as $700. So now John and Marsha have taken out $500, but as far as the bank records are concerned, they've only withdrawn $300. Um, so this kind of simultaneous access uh, causes updates to cancel each other. Um, a similar problem is what's known as the inconsistent read, uh, which I'm not going to get into right here. Uh, but you get the idea that uh, without concurrency control, um, information uh, may not reflect uh, reality and might be in an inconsistent state. Uh, we're going to talk about how to control this in, in the subsequent video lecture, but that ends this video lecture on concurrency control.